Hey everyone, we're here at the uh, the Grand Haven RC Flying Club field and it's a little uh, flooded. We got about about a month's worth of rain in just a little over a week. So uh, because of that, all that rain is giving me the perfect opportunity to try the Turbo Timber Evolution on floats. Normally, and this is our normal flying field. This is actually the uh, fabric runway that I'm standing on right now. And as you can see, it is totally flooded over. So like I said, yeah, perfect opportunity to get that Turbo Timber Evolution into the air and try it with floats. Um, I'm already super geeked about float flying. I fly my original on floats. I've flown the Twin Otter on floats. And personally, I like flying on floats better than flying with the landing gear, especially on stall planes like this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, fire up the, um, the Turbo Timber Evolution here and see how well does this thing fly on floats. The E-Flight Turbo Timber Evolution is absolutely fantastic as a float plane. Uh, the original Timber was as well, uh, but I can really say that um, after flying both um, kind of back to back, the, where the, the new um, Turbo Timber Evolution really shines is that top loading battery hatch. Yeah, you know, I've, I've talked about that thing quite a bit, but honestly, when you fly the original and this back to back, that's one thing that really jumps out at you as a massive improvement. Before, uh, once you had one flight on the water and the pontoons and everything, the bottom of the fuselage was all wet, you would open up the battery hatch on the original and you'd get water um, all over the battery and the, and the connector and everything, and so you always had to be wiping down the um, the aircraft before you were able to access the battery hatch. With the new uh, the Evolution, with that top-mounted battery hatch, you don't have to do that. You can let the aircraft sit right there on the floats, open up the battery hatch, and swap out the, uh, the batteries. Now, for my flights that are in this video series here, I used a, um, a 3S2200. Um, actually for all the flights and if you're going to be using that lightweight battery which is really like the smallest battery that you can go with on the um, on the evolution you're going to want to move that as far forward as possible in the battery tray and even then it's just a skosh on the tail heavy side um, it's really not a uh, it's not a problem or a big deal or anything but just to let you know that there is the extra weight that you do get from having the um, the floats installed and it does bias the center of gravity just a little bit to the rear um, in flying, I noticed just a, maybe just a little bit of uh, increased elevator sensitivity, but I mean, it's basically the exact same flying airplane on floats as it is on, um, on the wheels. I didn't really notice too much of a difference there. Um, I did fly with the, uh, the 4S 2200 as well, but I actually kind of like the 2200 3S better on floats than I did on with the wheels. And the reason is, is that with the uh, the 4S power, um, as you kind of throttle up to get the airplane into the air, it's really, you're going to be combating a lot more P factor. And so the aircraft's going to want to veer more to the left um, on 4S than with 3S. Um, and I think you can maybe get around that with a lot more throttle management. But um, that's just something I noticed that um, when they flew it off the ground with the wheels on it in 4S, I didn't really sense anything like that at all but on water it was a little bit more sensitive to that so I actually prefer 3S on the water and 4S if you're going to be flying off off the ground uh, both the 3S and 4S the 2200s do need to be pushed all the way forward in the battery tray in order to uh, get the aircraft to balance and even then it's just a, like I said it's just a little bit tail heavy it does not affect the flight performance at all um, as for water handling the um, the aircraft has got plenty of power and plenty of uh, rudder authority um, to maneuver around in the water without any issues. And even if you get into some um, some shallow spots, the uh, the floats don't get hung up at all. And that those spring-loaded um, rudders on the pontoons are just fantastic. They they were great. You can, you can put this thing right up on the ground. You can even taxi on the ground with it, and they just fold up out of the way. Um, as for um, the flap settings, um, I did increase the flap settings a little bit more closer to what the factory recommends um, for float flying. I like the idea of being able to slow the airplane down a little bit more for landing on floats, and I also like getting into the air just a little bit, um, a little bit quicker. You still can't do like a, you know, mash the throttle and go straight into the air like you can on the ground when you're on water. Um, it, it doesn't look right either. I, I prefer a more scale looking longer takeoff but I did find that a little bit extra flap deflection uh, compared to what I fly with on the ground was was better. 
Um, also, I didn't fly with the slats on still. I, I removed them. You know, I don't have them on at all on the original on this one. Where the original one, I do have my slats, and I did fly back to back with my original and the Evolution. And I would say, if you're going to make this a dedicated float flyer, the slats is not a bad idea. And the reason is, is it gets you in the air just a little bit quicker um, off the water, and it also you can get a lot better um, slow speed performance on landing with the the slats installed. So just something to think about that if you're going to make it a dedicated float plane, um, you may want to think about the uh, the slats. Uh, I think there's just a little bit of uh, performance gain that you can be had there. But it's not bad, of course, with um, without the slats either. I was able to obviously fly in a pretty small uh, flooded area here without any issues at all with the aircraft. And, um, you know, the other thing too is you, you, people think that the pontoons are going to add a lot of drag to the airplane and make it really slow in the air. I didn't really, I've never found that to be the case, either with the original or the Evolution. Both aircraft... Um, perform just great uh, with the pontoons on. I don't really notice any significant loss of power, significant amount of drag, or, or even significant amount of battery consumption. Now, which is interesting, because like uh, on my little EDF jets, if you uh, you put all the missiles and, and ordnance on them, you'll notice that the, the performance drops off pretty significantly. We're here on the timber, it seems to have just plenty of power, uh, even on 3S, um, would they have the pontoons on and not affect the, uh, the flight performance at all. Um, my suggestions, um, if you are interested in buying the new Turbo Timber Evolution, is to find somewhere to fly it on, on the water. The plane is so much fun. It is so rewarding to fly it, uh, especially in the evening like I'm doing here. Uh, it's just, uh, I can't say enough good things about it. It is almost, it's like a relaxing, therapeutic flying to fly off water. It's so much different than flying off land. I enjoy it considerably more than flying off land, and especially with um, the timbers. And I think they look, just like the Twin Otter, I think the timbers and the Twin Otter look far better as float planes than they do as um, planes with, with the landing gear and the wheels on it. I just love how these planes perform, how they look, how they fly. They are fantastic float planes, and the Evolution is, is like, it's the same way. It does not disappoint on the water at all. Um, one thing to note that if you do a lot of float flying uh, with either the, the, the original timber, the turbo timber, or even the Evolution here, you do get a little bit of water in the pontoons. I'm not exactly sure where it comes from, but if you're going to be doing a lot of float flying, uh, you may want to tip the aircraft, um, kind of hang it up by its tail a little bit, or do something that allows that water to drain out. I think it may come from the, um, from the, the rear mounted uh, rudders on the pontoons. So if that's the case, uh, you're just going to want to go ahead and um, let the aircraft drain for a little bit. I mean, I'm only talking maybe a few drops that come out of it, but if you're not aware of that, there's a chance that you could easily start gaining some water weight in those floats, and that could obviously affect your um, your handling and, and performance quite a bit. But no issues at all with um, you know the flying I did. I flew, I don't know how many flights off the water, probably close to a dozen of them, and like I said, there was just a little bit of water that came out. But Something to be aware of that if you are going to fly off flows, just be aware that that can happen and just make sure you kind of just prop the airplane up vertically so that they drain. And I'd, I'd point it so the nose is up in the air, tail down configuration, and I think that allows the um, the water to just float or, or drain right out the back of the floats. So, But yeah, overall, I, guess I can't say enough good things about the Turbo Timber Evolution um, as a float plane. It is just fantastic. Easy to fly easy to land, uh, it's just, it's easy to taxi on the water, it's so stable on the water, I, I, I just can't, I can't say enough good things. Um, I'm very sad to report that my uh, little lake here that came from uh, a recent rainstorm, it, it's just about dried up and so I'm going to be losing my, uh, my float fly area here, but I'm um, excited to put the wheels back on and get it back on the ground again, but I really, really enjoyed flying this aircraft. Um, off the water. It just is so much fun. If you've never done it before, I highly encourage you to find some area that you can fly the airplane off water and, and give it a shot. It's just a, such a totally different flight experience. And look here, I mean, look at how awesome this plane looks. Look at it on the water here with the reflection underneath of it. It's perfect. It's as, it's as if the, the, the timber lineup just was always meant to be a float plane and it just fits it so well. Uh, it's it's just great. 
So yeah, if you've never flown on water before, this is a fantastic airplane to actually do that with. And I highly encourage you guys to uh, find a water spot, find somewhere to try this out. But be aware, there's a little bit more challenges to flying. It definitely rewards being smooth on the throttle and very smooth on the landings. And you don't want to get the aircraft stranded out into the water. So keep that in mind as well, that if you, you are flying off water, let's say like a lake or a pond that you, you, um, you don't have great access to just walk out and grab the airplane, to make sure you have a backup plan in play. Um, I've, I've taken my little RC boat out with me with a coat hanger taped to it, and I've never had to use it, but um, when I've flown off larger bodies of water, that's what I've done to try to give me some sort of recovery um, in case I need it. Uh, you can also use fishing pole uh, with like a tennis ball on it and try to snag the airplane. Um, so there's a couple options. You can kayak out to it, but just keep yourself safe when flying off floats if you're flying off a large body of water in case the aircraft does get stranded. Um, I've only had one airplane once, I think my old Super Cub uh, nosed over in the water uh, many, many, many years ago, very early in my flying career, and thankfully I was able to, uh, to retrieve it just by walking out in about knee deep water, but um, yeah, it made a little bit of a mess, and I always brought a towel with me after that to uh, dry off in case I need to recover it, but just keep that in mind that th there are some different challenges you need to be aware of if you're going to fly off water. But once you find that water spot and you get the uh, the turbo timber evolution on floats and you put it in the water, it will totally change your outcome on on how you want to fly. You will be looking for water um, all over the place because this really is one of the most rewarding uh, parts of the hobby. So if you guys got any questions at all on the new turbo timber evolution um, or float flying in general, by all means, leave your comments below and uh, subscribe for uh, a lot more um, flying footage and. Uh, just enjoy a nice landing here with the uh, the Turbo Timber Evolution and um, a nice taxi back here on the water. And I tell you, like I said before, it's like this plane was always meant to be on float. So um, yeah, leave your comments below and uh, I greatly appreciate all the discussion so far I've had on, on YouTube and online about the Turbo Timber Evolution and I'm always going to be around to help answer those questions for everyone.